Welcome everyone, Joe Tarnowski with ECRM, and I have with me today Maddie Yastro, who is one of the independent retailers on range me she's the owner of maddie's market in um chicago she's in the um highland park area near chicago's north shore and she participated in our range me sourcing campaign to find some new products for her location and we're going to talk a little bit about that so maddie thank you so much for joining us and before we get started mm -hmm. can you give us an overview of your business, uh, your origin story, you know, sure. maybe a little background on what led to it. Uh, I am a true pandemic pivot. Um, for a lot of people, you know, the pandemic was very devastating. Um, for me, it was a really nice reset. And um, I have always been food adjacent in my career um, with, you know, in communications, I was in television and stuff, but always food related. Um, and when the pandemic hit, a uh, single girl living in downtown Chicago with my dog and commuting for a job that I didn't love, uh, but paid well. And um, what ended up happening was, you know, the world shut down. I was furloughed like day one. And my folks were like, look, you can you can come up uh, here, but then you can't go back and forth. Like we're not they're in their 60s. They were like, we don't want you pushing elevator buttons and then coming into our house because we just didn't know back then. So once I hunkered down, I was there. And um, to pass the time I was cooking, I often to just entertain myself would um, make how to cooking videos. Like if I went to the farmer's market and I had some cool stuff, I would just, you know, make these stories on Instagram. And um, literally they were for my own entertainment. Um, people were watching, but it wasn't like there was no like I wasn't trying to go viral or like I, I was just like making them. And um, I started doing more and more because, of course, that's all we were doing. And um, within a week or two, a family friend said, hey, whatever you're cooking for your folks, do you think we could pay you to get in on it? Because we're sick of pizza. We don't cook. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And so we, you know, created some sort of arrangement. And I cooked for them and my parents at the same time, three times that week. And it was something different every night. And then by the next week, some other people had found out and it was 11 families and then it just picked up. So I was creating these menus every week from my imagination, right? I've been reading menus and reading food magazines and cooking and like obsessing over, you know, whatever for my entire life. So I was just thinking about all the different things I wanted to try to cook, creating these menus and people would sign up for what nights looked good for them. They get a three course meal for 35 bucks curbside pickup in my parents' driveway. And um, it worked really well. I was able to pay rent for the apartment I wasn't living in and all the stuff. And I soon realized I'm never going back to a desk job. I am probably never going to go live in the city again. Like I'm back. I'm, you know, reconnected with all my friends who, you know, have young families and I wouldn't have like bumped into them anywhere because I was living the single girl life. So I just felt really connected and home again. Um, so it became very clear that I needed, people were forgetting to pre-order. People don't, you know, these days you don't have to plan that far ahead. You know, everything's at our fingertips, but I'm not a restaurant. I, you know, I didn't have the capabilities to do things on the fly. So it started to become very clear that I needed to have like a pickup spot. And so that's where Maddie's Market came from. It's essentially a gourmet grab and go, but it's all... um food that I know, I knew that the people that I was cooking for would want to eat. So it's lots of salads, like healthy, clean, loaded salads. Um, we have our signature items, chicken salad, curry, chicken salad, sesame noodles, dill pickle hummus is one of my best sellers. And those we have every day and then the other stuff rotates. And then we have some incredible retail. And I have found awesome snacks through, I've used fair for the, the wholesale, but you know, it's a shot in the dark, right? Like you don't have that much information about a company. A lot of times the minimums, you know, I'm a small company and I don't want to commit to something. So I would like have to like buy one of something on Amazon to try it first. Um, and then I created this pantry section, which was like my personal Disney world, because of course I was getting everything I wanted at cost and people could, you know, pick that up too. So after a year in business, um, I need, you know, you need to switch things up when you don't have a huge store and a huge selection. You know, people want 
you know, I have people that come every day, right? And you want to give them something to look at all the time, something new, something to try. So um, I started looking for, you know, other companies that offered um, kind of a, a way to find like a resource for retail. And um, I, the big, you know, Unify and Kehoe and that, like, I don't meet their minimums. They won't ship it to me unless I spend $500. That's not happening, you know? Um so in my research, I came across, oh no, you know how I found range me? It's so funny. Instagram or I think, yeah, because I didn't start going on TikTok till later, but there was some influencer guy who cooked and he's just like some adorable um, guy in Michigan and he was doing low carb stuff and he had these wraps, these low carb wraps and he was making like a gyro. And I was like, yeah, I know how to make a gyro, but that wrap looks good. But he never like said what it was. He wasn't promoting it. He was just like, and I have these low card wraps and he did that. And I was like, I need to get that. I, I need to try that. Um, and I couldn't find it. And I went to their website and they said, Oh, you can find us on range me. And I was like, what is that? And I go to look, I'm like, this does not seem like what I'm supposed to go to. Right. Like I couldn't figure it out. I did not know, you know, I knew what ECRM was, but like not really. And like, I just didn't get it. But then I, you know, it took some time and I got the samples and it was awesome. And then I started messing around and seeing that like I I could just scroll and then you could request samples, you could ask questions. Um, and the company doesn't have to send it to you or whatever, but I was getting some really cool stuff, getting some really cool ideas. Um, and I it was a month or two that I was like really using it. Mm -hmm. And that's when um Colleen and Jerry reached out to me. They must have seen my account was active and you know, I'm not um, Publix. <laughs> so they were like, what is this little, you know, store? So that's, they reached out to me and I was like, yeah, I'm happy to be your guinea pig. That sounds fun. Yeah, that's great. I mean, one, that's an amazing origin story. Like you truly grew organically in response to the market. It doesn't get any more pure than that. Something starting in your home uh, and then people coming to you and they're growing and growing and growing. So you know, you've shaped your business really among around your customers. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, independents, <clears throat> independents always have a tough time finding products. So that's why we're trying, we're, we're doing this to help them out. And, um, you know, for the sourcing campaign that you did, what was the overall goal, right? Once they approached you, Colleen and Jerry, and, you know, you said, look, we can do this for you. What was the overall goal? Like what types of products were you looking to source? And why? Um, so basically I told them what um, what my general goal was. It wasn't specifics. I think I could do another campaign now at this point that I've done it. I know mm -hmm. I got some great products, but like now it's a different time of year. I have an idea. Like I know I need more X, Y, and Z so I could be mm -hmm. like more focused on my campaign. So this was kind of a broad campaign. Um you know, we like to use uh, the cleanest, you know, products we can, but we're not against, you know, something that isn't. Um, but I like to have things at different ends of the um, cost spectrum. So, you know, if someone comes in, it's a pretty high, um, you know, the community is, is pretty, you know, wealthy and they will spend money on um, proper ingredients and they are reading about that stuff and they spend a lot of money on themselves and their health. Um, and, you know, for instance, they know now that like seed oils and canola oils and that is supposedly causing all our inflammation. So the first thing they're doing is looking at the back of these, you know, and, and seeing. So I like to have something that will appease them. Mind you, it could be a $14 bag of tortilla chips, but, but it checks their boxes aside from the yeah. price. And then I'll also have another great brand that might not be that, but it'll be like six bucks. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and value and price are two separate things, right? You totally. can, it can be expensive and deliver a lot of value because for that money, you're getting a quality product and that, and you know, a lot I of people have like what that. you want and I didn't make the price. So, but at the same time, that kind of exactly doesn't answer your question because that was an open, mm -hmm. um, sector for me, but I was saying I want, you know, pantry items, snacks, sweets, um, and um, things that are not typically sold in Whole Foods, in Publix. And, you know, we have Mariano's here, which was Kroger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have um, 
big box grocery stores everywhere. And so because my shop is independent and it's like in a town, but I'm also not in the downtown central business district, it's more like the neighborhood strip. And um, so I needed another draw other than picking up lunch Mm -hmm. to come in. So I wanted to find some brands that maybe had name recognition or something like that, but um, that you couldn't just get readily. So we opened it up to that kind of thing. We set some parameters Mm -hmm. And I think I got over 300 like bids or I don't know. I forget what they call it. Um, well, they apply. Yeah. So, so yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, you, you know, you set those parameters, like you said, and then we could do that. We can, you know, whether you want to do certain certifications, certain ingredients, certain price ranges, whether it's a location, if they're manufactured somewhere in the region, or even you can weed out ones that are getting distribution in major retail so that you know that you know that that wasn't a make or break but that was something like and again you know it it was a pretty broad campaign um and it's my sister and i at the shop there is no other employee Mm -hmm. um so when i tell it so then you know I, i went through all of the applications and um you know, I had to figure out, I mean, they all sounded great, right? Like there was a very few that just were like, this has nothing to do with me, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So I had to find some other parameters to kind of like, you know, use as criteria. Um, And I ended up approving like 80. Mm -hmm. Um, And the next step was that I crafted a letter with Jerry that was automatically sent when I approved or denied. Um, the applications. And I don't think I had any idea, even though I like knew that we were asking for samples, I didn't really think about the volume of samples and the timing, right? So everyone's getting this letter at the same exact time, requesting samples and um, further information and contacts. And it happened to just coincide with my busiest time of the year. We we are right outside a outdoor amphitheater, which has music all summer long. And so I make picnics. So yeah. it's like, so it was literally end of August and we are slammed and the boxes just kept coming. Oops. They just kept coming and coming. <laughs> and we have a very small shop. And like, my sister was like getting so mad at me because she kept having to like, re- you know, just like make room for stuff. And I was like, you don't understand. This is going to be really fun when we open it. Like, just don't get mad at me. This is Christmas. I'm telling you. And it was. It was like freaking Christmas. It was a dream come true for someone like me. And we just had opening boxes and we had samples and samples and samples of the most incredible products. And it got to, it was at the point where I had to ask some of my most loyal customers to to be the tester for me because at a certain point, you're kind of like, I can't taste one more thing. I won't give it the fair shot. Right. So my customers got involved and they were loving that process. And we found some really awesome um, products that we subsequently brought in the shop. Excellent. That I think that was a brilliant idea, getting your customers involved, because then they have, you know, they have a vested interest in it and, and you're including them. So they're really feeling a part, uh, really engaged with you. The neighbors right here, I mean, we are literally, I'm sitting in my house right now, which is one block from my shop. Uh, There's like a Walgreens pharmacy across from the shop. There's a bunch of restaurants, like dry cleaners, but it's like small town within a town. Mm -hmm. And so like the neighbors are what drives whatever I make, whatever I do. And um, although that concept probably isn't going to work forever, um, you know, someone says, hey, I was really craving split pea soup. I'm going to make split pea soup the next day. Um, so it made complete sense to, to bring them in and have some fun, you know, who doesn't like free food? No, that's great. That's great. So now once you went through all that, um, which, what drove your final decisions on which ones to uh, bring in? And can you talk a little bit about the products that you did bring in? Sure. Um, first of all, there were, there are still products that I have, like I have a running list that I will bring in or would like to bring in, you know, sometimes it's a matter of funds or shelf space. Um, You know, the retail is tricky. You never know how much to have. It's, you know, a a big cost for an independent retailer. Um, But we started with, okay, we need some sweets, let's say, you know, like we had candy, we had these huge big fat cookies, but we needed something in between. And we um, found a company called Ponza, which is like a family company. I think they're in Florida and they, have these cute like bags like 
this of cookies, but the cookies are not super sweet. They're, they actually call them sweet crackers, but they are a cookie. They are a cookie. I swear. Um, but they're like, it's like if you took a, the most perfect piece of shortbread and you shaved slices. So they're like crackers, poppable. It's like a Pringle for cookies. Um, and they taste like a shortbread and they had like all these flavors. And it was for someone like me um, who doesn't have, a, I'm like more of a chip girl than a sweets girl. It was like the perfect after meal craving thing. And um so we brought those in and they flew and it's not a, this was one of our higher end products. It's a small company that makes it, I think, um, from what I understand, they had a, you know, a high minimum for someone like me, not crazy high, but like, and so I was like, you know, nervous. What if it doesn't slap? And it, it totally did. And, um, so that is a company that I will definitely be, re-upping with. And it just so happened that they had told me that they now have distribution at Erwan, which in LA is like the hottest mm -hmm. grocer. And it's actually a, a great source of a great resource for me. It's inspiration. Like, although I'm not going to be making like sushi sandwiches and like tempeh salads all the time, I definitely went there before I opened, walked the um, aisles and checked out because I didn't know about Range Me and one by one wrote down things that appealed. So when I found out that they were selling them too, I was like, awesome. I didn't have to go to LA to find it this time. Yep. Yep. Um, another company that we we just brought in um, is uh, Rancho Met Metaluca Dates. Mm -hmm. They're, incre they're incredible around here in the Midwest. People are used to like, you know, dates that you get at a grocery store that's either pitted or not, but they're like hard, right? Mm -hmm. Or you get a salad. It's fall here. So you get a lot of salads with goat cheese and roasted squash and like dates or cranberries. And like, they're like these hard little nuggets. These dates are like eating caramel. Like they're gooey and they're a treat and they're what you see on TikTok or Instagram the people are filling with a little peanut butter, dunking in chocolate, putting in the freezer, making their own Snickers. And um, it's this incredible farm in California. So we just bought those dates in and people are really excited about that. Um, another product was we had these purposeful pup um, dog bones. I'm a big dog lover. We we do not have any seating in our restaurant. So or it's not a restaurant. That's why. Um, so dogs come and visit us every day. And so these are aged like, I don't think it's a Birico, it's Serrano ham bones. So like when you're at a nice restaurant and they're shaving, you know, the yeah. not the prosciutto, but the ham, then they have these bones. So these bones have been aged and cured for two years. And instead of throwing them away, they, they're awesome dog bones. So that was like another random find that we, that we had. Um, to, there are also, you know, one of the things that I came across is sometimes, um, I think because it was such a wide net that we cast for me, um, some of the minimums were too high or someone didn't read the fine print, mm -hmm. um, which I think is something that they will address yeah. moving forward um, for user experience purposes. But there I had some of the best uh, canned tuna that I've ever had in my life packed in oil or spring water um, and you know, tin fish is all the rage these days. So yeah. I, you know, have reached out to the company to see if they can work with me on like a smaller amount because I don't need a pallet of them. Mm -hmm. um, these Monterey Farms arty hearts, they're called. They're artichoke hearts, but they're all the meat. Like it's not the like leaves that you can't chew, Yeah, you know, that you get in the canned ones. And you're like, what is the even the point of this? They're huge chunks of artichoke hearts mm -hmm. in a bag that's, you know, um, vacuum sealed. That's the word. And they're incredible um, as a snack or salad add on or whatever. So that was another one that I personally am eating all the time. That's great. That's awesome. I, I'd say, you know, you had a lot of good finds. I could see the excitement in when you're talking about them. <laughs> so I'm a excited. true. Yeah. I'm yeah. a food nerd. Yeah. And, and it's great because. This is the first time we did it with an independent. So like like you said, you were a guinea pig. This was testing it out. And we are going to do these again. And what did you learn? What would you do differently moving forward? Uh, on What are you going to do next uh, on the next one? It sounds like you'll be a little more focused on the next yeah, one. Yeah, a little more like specific. Like, um, you know, we have some incredible snacks. But I think, you know, we could use a refresh on our like 
crackers, chips, pretzels. Cause yeah. although we sell a ton of the brands that we carry, you know, now it's football season and people want that kind of thing. So I think I would like, you know, let's say in a year, I mean, I'll do something before, but you know, I'll know that in a few months I'll be ready for this kind of product. So I'll be able to, to put together a campaign that will directly benefit, you know, the seasonality of things and the need um, at the right time, you know, next year for the music festival. So like in the spring, I want to do a campaign that's more geared towards um, maybe some cheese or salumi or, you know, spreads that are good for, cause I'm do the, all those picnics. Um, so yeah, I think I will, look at a calendar and plan, um, which didn't, wasn't an option this time because it was just like a, Hey, will you do this at the, you know? So I think that that would be the most beneficial in that way. I won't waste anybody's time. Right. Like we got so people were so generous with the samples. I had started with a clipboard to, to, I wanted to handwrite thank you notes to all these companies because I knew I couldn't, you know, pick them all. And it was just like, I didn't end up writing a single one because it just got too overwhelming, right? Like there's just such great stuff out there. Yeah. And now, and you could also, I mean, I'm assuming you also use range me outside of the sourcing campaign just to look for things. hundred percent. Um, I started doing it, um, before I met Jerry and Colleen and did this and I'll continue to use it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's like, not like the Dewey decimal system for food, but like, essentially you're like, I need, you know, and it can, and it can help you. And like, it also gives you like origin of the company. If you're looking for something smaller, mom and pop, if you um, need a direct contact and cause like, you know, maybe there's something they can drop ship to you that they won't, t- they don't want to tell the masses that they can do that, but they will work directly with you if you can't have such a bit, if you, you know, can't commit to such a big order. So it's, um, you know, it, it makes the world feel a little smaller in that sense. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, so last question, like if you were talking to another independent, uh, how, what would you say about Rangeby? What, how would you recommend it? What has Rangeby done for you, uh, helped you with? I mean, it's the best resource I've come across because of course you don't, you can get information and you can get samples and you can get contacts, but you don't have to right away commit. Cause like some of these wholesalers that you can be a part of, it's a shot in the dark, right? When I opened, I needed stuff for the shelves, but a lot of these companies I'd never heard of. And the goal was to have never heard of them kind of, cause I didn't want the whole food snacks, you know? Um, and I was spending hundreds of dollars on something that could potentially suck, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've gotten crackers that were rancid. I've got, you know, there's, and then, then you can't get to anyone. You can't talk to anyone, you know, it's like submit a form and there's just, you know, it's frustrating and there are so many worthy companies that like, you know, so I just, I really appreciated that I could like, you know, take 10 minutes out of my day. And that's what I started doing. I looked forward and I still do, but like since the campaign, I haven't done it yet. Um, you know, in the morning, having my coffee, instead of hearing about the terrible things going on in the world or the weather or whatever, I would just scroll for like 10 minutes on range me, get some ideas for something, spark a little joy, click a few, send me samples. And that just became a a part of my routine because you never know what's going to pop up. Yes, you can search things, but it's almost more fun not to because you don't know what's out there. You know, there's plenty of companies I didn't know even had food products. So that's great. That's that's an awesome little clip there. <laughs> that's I've never heard of somebody using it like that. And you know what? We tell people all the time. It's like to get the most benefit out of it, you have to use it. You got to get in there. You got to be on there regularly and see what's there. And you are a perfect example of that. Well, I always think, you know, I mean, also like I'm it's just me, right? Like I'm not part of a major company, so I don't have to ask anyone's permission. I don't have to sell someone above me on a product in order to get a product. Um, so I always thought that I would be like a good person for that role in a bigger company because I'm just always looking anyway. Mm-hmm. I always want to know. I always want to try things. Um, it's just kind of like ingrained in me. So, um, you know, I'm I'm definitely the exception to the rule. Probably, I don't think the majority of people will be scrolling during their coffee, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, they should. They should yeah. at least you know we tell them at least once a week. But 
you know, to to uh, get on there regularly because it's always updated. There's thousands of products added a month, every month. So it's a good way to not get inundated or not to miss out on something. Like you said, you never know what's going to show up. So you go in there frequently, even if it's just 10 minutes a day, boom, right at the top, you're going to see the uh, newest, the, you're going to see the uh, the uh, Range B Verified ones. So anything new is going to be right up there waiting for you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you for being our guinea pig in this. And we look forward to uh, doing more of them with you. Thank you so much, Joe. It's nice to meet you. You too.